What's going on guys, it's Kazi. Welcome back to another epic video. I recently did a poll and asked you guys which tutorial should I work on next and most of you picked the Batman look. So that's what we're doing here. I'm breaking it into two different parts because to me, at least just looking at the trailer, the movie is split between two different looks. We got these cool tones and then we have these warm tones. So we're attacking the warm tones first and then we're gonna move on with the cooler tones. So, you know, the purpose of this channel is to turn you into a tastemaker and show you ways that are practical enough that you can apply right away after watching the tutorial. And we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8 bit footage. So, I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive QA, and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. So, do not forget to check out the free training. Link is up top and in the description below. And if you're enjoying the content, do me a favor, pause this video, smash the like button so we can reach more people. Subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. Make sure to hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we pump out new content. Follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes and quick tips and tricks. And let's roll the intro. All right, guys, let's do this. I'm excited to be attacking this particular film because I genuinely feel like it looks different than what Christopher Nolan did, which was amazing. And that's why I'm so shocked to see what these guys came up with, which is as beautiful, but in a completely different way. OK, so this is the frame that I picked because majority of the film, I feel like either lives in the warm tones or cool tones. OK, so what's really happening? First of all, my waveform is on the left side. Then I have a colorized waveform right here. Down here, I have parade. And here, I have vector scopes with the skin indicator turned on. OK, first thing that we see in our colorized waveform is that the entire image is made of warm tones, right? There is not a lot of complementary action going on at all. And we can even see it here. OK, so none of that, right? Everything is living in that top left quadrant. So that's what's creating this warm look. Now, I must say they do have a little bit of teal seeping in around here on the edges around here. We can see it around here a little bit like right here. OK, but that's about it. Our blacks are desaturated. So I'm going to show you a really cool technique to do that using our Resolve 17.4 new tools. OK, so now let's go to what we got going on. This is the clip that we're going to be working on. It is already parked on our hero frame. The note tree is going to be super simple and get excited because I will not be using any LUTs to create this. We're just going to use primary tools available inside Resolve to create this look. This is going to be based on five simple nodes. If you want to learn a proper sequence to your node tree, then make sure to check out the training. Link is down below. The final node here is going to be our CST. So this is where the color space transform is going to take place. The first one is going to be our primaries. Second one is going to be our basically primaries adjustment. Here we're going to throw on a window and then this is where we're going to create our look and adjust our look. OK, so let's start with our CST. We know this is shot on Ari Alexa Mini and we're going to drop our color space transform tool and go ahead and give it proper parameters. So input color space is Alexa. Input gamma is log C. Output is going to be rec 709 and gamma 2.4. So as soon as I do that, this is what I end up with, which is not bad. OK, so this is where we want to be. This is where we are. Once again, if we pull it up next to each other, we still got some ways to go. OK, now one thing that we should look at is right here. So every time you're doing a look recreation, I highly encourage you to go on IMDb or shotdeck.com where you can look up some technical specs about the project that you're trying to recreate. So cameras that they used were Ari Alexa LF and Mini LF. Now they went through Photochem Creative Services and Burbank for their DI. So all the jiggery pokery that happened there is not revealed. So we can't really see which type of negatives they used or film prints or anything like that. And that's another reason why I'm avoiding it altogether and trying to 
create a similar look inside Resolve. That's not to say that this is how they did it. This is just to show you what we can do to get close to getting a similar result. All right, guys, so we're already done with our CST looking good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my primaries. I'm going to pull up my image by clicking right here, split screen. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go under my HDR palette. I want to go under my global offset. I want to start pulling down my image because my image is way too bright. Um, compared to where we want to be. So I'm going to go too far and then bring it up and keep it somewhere around here. So if I do before and after, makes a pretty big difference. Maybe pull it up a little bit, just something like that. Looks pretty good, okay? The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start using my offset in my primaries right here, my printer lights, to start dialing in these tones into my image. And under color, you can turn on your printer lights hotkeys, and then you can just hit these keys to get a certain color, add or subtract a certain color, okay? So here, what I'm looking at is that, okay, there's too much green and yellow. It's more like a Fincher-esque action happening here, whereas I wanna go into this Batman world, okay? All right, so let's start by adding tons of red into our image. So I'm gonna go ahead, add some red, Okay, this is looking pretty good. This doesn't look bad. I want to take out, there's tons of green in my image. So I want to take that out by subtracting my yellow, add more red. And now I feel like there's too much blue in my image. So I'm gonna subtract some blue from my image. And now we're getting a pretty good similar tones. I'm gonna go ahead and add more red. And let's do one more and not bad, right? So what do we see? We see that there's still a lot more saturation in this image than that, which will come from dialing in the contrast and also the black points. You see like how so much red is in our black points, right? And we can even see it right here compared to what's happening over here. So now what I'm gonna do to adjust that to see what's really happening is go under my adjustments, go in my log wheels, take my reds, and pull it down, okay? And boom, like all of a sudden, we started to get this right there, okay? It's looking really, really good, and it's helping us out quite a bit. So we're gonna be ping-ponging, going back and forth. Now what I wanna do is like, I wanna go back in here. One thing that I can clearly see is that look at the saturation in this image compared to my image. You see the saturation? Like I need to add more saturation. So what I'm gonna do is just go in, global saturation, start pumping it in, go too far and then pull it back. And I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here and uh, let's just pull out and like look at it. So even if you look at our saturation to what's happening, uh, we're looking pretty good, okay? In terms of the saturation. So now what do I need to do? I need to go back in here, take my black points and again, work on them. So pull it down a little bit. Okay, so that is looking good. Now, at this point, I mean, we've made a big difference, okay? Like between this and right here, we've come a long way. So now all we have to do is work on our contrast a little bit. And to be honest with you, again, we're looking really, really good. The contrast is kind of soft here, and I like that. That's what gives it the quote end quote film look, whereas here, we're kind of harsh. So I'm gonna go in here pull this up so you guys can see what we're doing. But you know, before we even do that, let's let's work in our window first. So basically, you see how hard the vignette is, right? Like it's basically this right here and then feathered out and everything is pulled down. So we're gonna try to create a similar thing using this light source. I'm gonna go under my windows, click on this guy and l just genuinely create something like this, put it right here, something like that, and then go under my softness, pull it up to around 25-ish, invert it. So we select everything outside of it, move it over here, take my lift and pull it down because lift is gonna give us like this sort of action that's happening here, okay? So I can do something like that using my lift, then I can go under my softness and keep working it. Let's go to, okay, so let's, keep it around 30-ish. And if I do before and after, let's go more. Feather it out a little bit. And before and after. 
Personally, I think it helps, right? Like if we just look at what's happening on the edges, it helps. And another thing in this window I'm going to do is you see like how they're bringing in that teal around the vignette. So we can cheat it and do the similar thing. We can go under our log wheels, take my shadows and just creep in a little bit of like, like see what I'm doing that right there that I just added. So if I do before and after like right here to here, right? We didn't have that before. So here to there, such a small change goes a very long way. Okay. If I go before and after now, let me just look at the vibes. Okay. Like we just added that teal in. Now, one thing that obviously I see is like, you see like how everything is kosher here, whereas my blues are gone. They're crushed. And if I do this, they come up, but they're pretty much gone. So we have to protect that. You see these blues, they're gone. So this is what we're going to do in our custom curves. Okay. Right here. So now I'm going to work my custom curves. I'm going to pull up my reference so we can see what's happening. And uh, I'm just going to go in, lift this up quite a bit. Okay. So I'm going to bring it up uh, something like this. I'm going to pull down my highlights and now i'm just going to create a point here i'm going to do a very very gentle point here and here and now what i want to do is lift this up so you see like how we open up the whole image quite a bit um, I think the highlights are just not as harsh, so we should work on that because the highlights here are just like really strong. And uh, I think we did it. So if I go before and after, right, and if I turn this on and off, you can see how we brought back all that information that was clipped before. And now if we do before and after, uh, another thing that we can do at this point, I mean, this is looking pretty good. If I go here and here, the contrast seems pretty similar to what's going on. We can try to go back in here, log wheels, and then lift it up and see if it brings anything of value. And I think it does, right? Like, I mean, we do want to see a little bit of like definition here. And now if I do before and after, it has a very, very similar vibe. Guys, you got to take your time creating these look DNAs because once it's created, it can easily be applied to this entire scene. It's going to look very similar. All you will have to do at that point is go under your primaries and then under your HDR, adjust your exposure for majority of the shots to match them. Everything else is going to fall into place. Okay. So that is extremely important. Just look at what we created happened before your eyes, how easy it was. And now one thing that I can do is I can go under this mode right here, put this next to my image. Look at how close we are. The only thing that I see is that I can go in here, actually in here, in my hue versus hue, I can take my yellows and swing them so they're a little bit warmer. Okay, so I can take my yellows and just pull it down a little bit. See, so now it's a little bit warmer than how it was before. Okay, and if I do before and if I do after, I mean, the difference is so subtle that it's barely noticeable. Um, I think it helps. I can also go under hue versus saturation. I can take my yellows and try to crank it a little bit. Okay. So not too much, crank it a little bit and see if it does anything. Personally, I think it helps. I mean, look at here to here, how close we have gotten to where we were before. Okay. So I personally think it really, really helps and bring, brings it all together. And guys, don't forget, we did not use any LUTs. We didn't do anything. We created everything inside Resolve. And this little touch how we went under our shadows and just added a little bit of teal went a long way. Okay. Just look at this teal that we're getting around the edges. 
it really brought the entire look together right here. So we're going to go through here and like look at it almost like the same exact shot because if I take all of these, basically if I go to my Rec. 709, you can see that the difference is night and day. Look right here, what we created. It's absolutely insane how far we have come. I'm going to go through all of these options in my image wipe for you guys to like really see what's happening. And honestly, we're, we're nailing it. We're there. We don't necessarily have to do anything. And then this is a great way to kind of see not just the hue, but the saturation of your entire image. And when I move it and kind of see what's going on, one thing that I do notice is that I can swing the hue of my yellow to bring a little bit more warmth. Okay, so I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to go under my hue versus hue and I'm going to try to swing it a little bit and see what happens, like even something like that. And then I'm going to go back to my hue versus saturation. I'm going to take my yellow and raise it up a little bit. Uh, obviously, I want to go too far and then kind of pull it back. So even if I park it somewhere around here and now I open up my image, you can see that overall we're getting even a closer look to where we were before. OK, once again, I want to go back to my hue versus hue. I do like the warm, so I don't want to go too far with the yellow because we want to look at our overall image. So this does feel much better. Now let's go through a different style. And this is, again, very, very cool because look at that. Come on. I mean, look at this to this. What the image that we're trying to mimic to what we created here. I mean, look at it. So if I were to just take this and turn it on and off, you can see all the magic that happened in this one note. And once again, if we go to our Rec. 709, because this is our log. This is our Rec. 709. And then this is what we created. I mean, come on. And this is all done using the tools available to anybody that's using the free version of Resolve or paid version. And then this is another good one to see how close you are. Once again, Rec. 709, that this is what we created. And if we turn off our main node where majority of the look was created, you can see the difference. I mean, you can't tell the difference. Like, come on, like, look at it. What we were able to cook up. This is Rec. 709. This is what we ended up with. So if we were to just kill all of this and that's our image, I'm going to pull up our reference next to it. We started with our CST, then went and worked on our primaries. There was a ton of red which I went in, used my log wheels to control that. And then we created a vignette and that helped us out quite a bit. And we also added this really nice teal that we see here that brought the entire look together. And then finally, I think this did quite a bit. So we swung the hue of our yellow uh, to make it a bit warmer. We also used hue versus saturation and pumped up our yellow quite a bit, just like what we see here. And then we used our custom curves to really dial in that film curve that we see here compared to what we had before. Because if I go here and turn off this node, you see like how digital it looks compared to like how much more cinematic it is with this custom curve change that we added here. So let's check out the final look in full screen. My goal from these tutorials is always the same, which is to show you the simplest way to go from A to B. OK, hopefully it was accomplished in this tutorial. I think what we ended up with was incredible, especially using all the tools that are available to free version of Resolve and Studio version. So if you found this tutorial helpful, again, do me a favor, smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do so right now. Hit the bell icon. And guys, if you really want to take your color grading game to the next level, do not forget to check out the free training. Link is up top and in the description below. And on that note, remember, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video.